All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Today, you've got me and AJ, unfortunately. Hi, guys. Um, we are going to uh, Brighton, is it? Just outside of Brighton, near, um, it's called Oak Hanger. I'm not sure, I've never been there before. It's about 200 and something miles away. Right, okay, so about a three and a half hour trip, give, give or take. Yeah, give or take. Yeah, we've got to go and pick up a car, um, which we'll explain more about on the way for Matt. He's busy at the garage today. So, got a few little errands to run to post some merch. So, you've been left with us. So yeah, we'll uh, see you on the road. Oh, that's better. Oh, much better. So, we've got an hour longer than we thought we had. It's four hours, 23 minutes away. So today we are going to pick up a uh, 1998 to 99 Vauxhall Corsa B for our new show that you've probably seen in the previous video called Car Chat. So the idea with the show is to have a bit of an interview show. It's something Matt's wanted to do for a while, but we wanted a kind of a unique hook. The best idea we came up with was surprising the, the guests with their first ever car. Our first episode with Mike Brewer, it was a tough one because he had his first ever car yeah. and the first car that they had on wheeler deal porsche 928 yeah and his first ever car was a mini uh 1989 mm. mini 850 or something like that a beige one uh but he owns a very similar mini cooper s so that kind of nostalgia moment wouldn't have happened anyway so we thought we'd go down the route of getting the corsa b which inspired matt basically wasn't it yeah well matt, matt was inspired to start selling cars in spain after watching wheeler dealers Mm. And the first car he bought and sold in Spain was a left-hand drive Corsa B. So Matt's managed to find a left-hand drive one in the UK. Don't know the full history with it. No, I know it's got low mileage. I think it's 30,000 miles. Something like that. Um, and it's got aircon. Ooh. Because it's the uh, left-hand drive, so it'll be... But I've, I've never dri driven one of these, have you? <sighs> I've, I've driven the newer Corsas, but... I had a test run in one, I think, when I was right. like 17 in Spain. Right, so we've got four hours, 23. Yeah, four hours, 23. If we uh, see anything interesting along the way, we'll keep you updated. <laughs> if not, we'll see you in, um, what's it called? Oak Hanger. Right. Yeah. See you Less there. time for me. So, just a quick update for you guys. The weather is horrendous. Miserable. We are an hour and 40 into the drive, so we've got three hours left. Currently at the toll booth, which has gone up now to, what is it, 960? We'll find out in a sec, won't we? £9.60, I think it is. It's ridiculous, isn't it? £9.60. How much has Matt bought this car for? Oh, that's a good question. 1800 is it? I think it can't be 1800 That sounds dear, that, doesn't it? How does it? And it's only done 30 I think it's 1200 Ready first, guys? Ready for me to get spanked? Nine pounds seventy. It is online online receipts only. Nine pounds seventy. That was a lot of effort for a nineteen ninety nine Corsa, isn't it? Just thinking, then, have you ever drove a left hand drive car in the UK? Yeah, we had that um, imported five hundred E from California. Oh yeah. Drive. Drove that here. Not a fan of driving left hand drive. Well, you've done it before, so you should drive the Corsa back. I'm all right. Do you know what? It's, it's an experience, so I'll let you do it. I drove the Blingo back. You like that, though? No, no. <laughs> well, this is nice weather, isn't it? <sighs> How is this? Middle of June. So we are an hour and 58 away. We've hit quite a lot of traffic so far. Don't crash. As we keep stopping in the traffic, we thought might as well go get something to eat. I'm hoping it dies down a bit, because this is, this is the worst it's been, and it's only just started, but. We have seen every season. Every season in the past two hours. All right, should we brave it? Yeah, we're gonna have to, aren't we? Take 
Well, we're here. It might have taken us seven hours, but we're finally here. And we bought the Opel Corsa. And we bought it for, wait for it, £1,295. You might think that's a lot for a Vauxhall Corsa of this age, and you'd be right. But there's not many out there. There's about 10 on Auto Trader, 10 or 11, and then about the same or less on eBay. And it's only done just short of 31,000 miles. It's a three cylinder, one litre petrol engine car, which isn't quick, which I'll show you now. We'll do a quick performance test down to third, just as AJ brakes. So it's going to look a lot quicker than it was. But it's actually not that bad. I thought this was going to feel really slow, but in comparison to things like Matt's Bolingo, it's a rocket. So what can I tell you about this little Corsa? It's been in the UK since 2005. We've got a wad of papers for Matt to go through at some point. We think it's from Italy. There's some stickers on the back, uh, which look Italian. I'll have to do a, a check on them when we stop. In terms of the condition, the car, for its age, is pretty good. There's some cracks on the uh, plastics, but on a 22-year-old car, 23-year-old car, it's kind of to be expected. Uh, I'm missing a radio. Somebody's already nicked that. Uh, but the aircon is ice cold. The car itself, I'm really impressed with. It pulls decently for the size of the engine. The gearbox is nice. It goes into every gear nice and smoothly. It does look like a big white Husky's been living in here, though. It's full of dog hairs. So my nice black hoodie's got to be full of them when I get out. But I do think Matt will be happy with this. It might not be nostalgic for Mr. Brewer, but it definitely will be for Mr. Goodwin. It's got electric windows, which both work. My right mirror, I can't move with the uh, little toggles. So I'm gonna have to fix that when I get out. I've just had to put some petrol in it because it was on fumes. It only cost me 63 quid to fill though. So in this day and age, that's a bargain. I genuinely think might disagree with me here. I genuinely think if you weren't fussy about which what kind of car you were driving, this is good enough for someone to run around in. In fact, I think Matt is planning to actually drive this to Spain to replace the Fiat Panda that's sitting there. Obviously it's left-hand drive, so it'll be great for the roads over there. And it's a comfortable enough little run around for him. But yeah, we're currently on the way to a hotel because like I said, we set off at 11 a.m. this morning it's now 20 to 8 of an evening. So we're going to park this up at the hotel tonight. Then tomorrow, myself and AJ, bright and early, I've got a 220 mile drive back to High Peak HQ. But it will be a good little test for it, as when we go and film the Mike Brewer next week, it will be another three hour drive away. So if it makes it back home, it'll make it to Mike Brewer. Other than a little a little rattle somewhere here on the dash. The car's pretty solid. The brakes are good, the gearbox is good, it handles really nicely. It's got four new tires on it. That's one thing to mention actually. I don't know if it's because it's the left-hand drive one or not. I know these were built in Spain, but, ooh, classic Z3. Uh, all of the pedals are over to the right-hand side. So I'm just kind of sat on an angle. Other than that, it's all right to drive. So as always, before we bought it, we did do a car vertical check. It's really easy to do. All you do is go to carvertical.com, type in the vehicle reg, which in this case is X-Ray 832 Victor Golf Charlie, and hit checked vehicle. It's not expensive and it's even cheaper still if you use the promo code HIGHPEAK at checkout, or just click the link in the description and you'll save 20% off each and every check that you do. This will tell you if it's ever been written off, has a mileage rollback, if it's been stolen, or if it has any outstanding finance on it. It checks databases in 35 different countries, so if this course has had a mishap in Manchester or a knock in Newcastle, it'll let us know. It's not just a UK thing, so no matter where you're buying a car, it's worth doing a check. Right, and the report is ready. So the mileage is fine, there's no outstanding finance, no damage, and it's never been stolen. So as you can see, the last MOT had 30,816 miles on the clock and it's been very consistent every single year. There's only about 2,000 miles each year, which on a car of this age is quite rare to see. Okay, if we keep scrolling down, we can see the average market value. So average price, 1,095. Obviously there's not many out there, so we have probably overpaid slightly, but it's more for the show than it is uh, to retail and make a profit out of. So as you can see, it's an Opel Corsa hatchback, model year 2000, left-hand drive, Three cylinder, very good. Then we can see all the history. So it was manufactured in January 2000, 
registered in Italy. Inspected, inspected, a few fails. And then if we go to the most recent one, we can see it's been sat on the road for the last two years, but the most recent one has no advisories. Very good. So should we give you a quick tour of the car? So we've got not one, but two keys. The central locket. No, you've got to put it in the door. 19, it's 2001. Other side, left, left hand drive. drive. So it's got a few little scratches on the bumpers and stuff, but... Yeah, let's put four new tyres on. What makes this? It is a arrow speed. So we've got four arrow speeds. AJ's been uh, stumped by the door. Can't open it. That's, there we ah, go. Right. Just a bit stiff. Oh wow. Throaty, innit? Do you know what? It's not as slow as you think it is. It's not rapid, but... It's the... Um, no, I fully remember my... Uh, the one that my brother had. The white one. It says it in litres there as well. Look, fuel. Hey? Fuel litre. Yeah, yeah. No way. So, it's missing a stereo, which we can find, that's no problem. Original mats by the looks of it. Yeah, I was saying on the camera before, the pedals are so far over to the right. Yeah, it's like the, um, the saxo. You've got to twist yourself The saxo, yeah. Oh wow, yeah, they're properly. No, that's, yeah, they're really close. No, it's not too bad though, is it? No, but like, even just like the condition of the doors and stuff. Like you'd expect this to wear out. Yeah. Still feels soft. Mm. Both windows work. That's about it for features. Oh, the aircon's good. Automatic as well. No way. So there's a bit of a dint on this quarter panel. But not the end of the world, really. Yeah. Quite smart. No, it is. I was saying 1,300 quid seems like quite a lot for yeah. a Corsa. But there's only about 10 on... Oh, oh, it's it's 39 cakes. Yeah, uh, 31. 31k, yeah. Bumper looks, bottom bumper looks a slightly different colour to the top. But that's probably just because it's plastic. This light looks like it's got a bit of a algae or something in it as well. Yeah, not bad. Ooh, it's 2000 edition. Didn't notice that. Unfortunately, there's no goodies in it like uh, Matt can normally find. It's a pretty clean car other than the... Uh, other than the dog hair that's about. It's got a spare. Yeah. Ooh, I've probably. seen better days, hasn't it? Yeah. So, should mean you go to Tesco, get some bits for the night, stock up? Yeah. You can drive. I'll drive. Right, well, the lads have just brought back the old Corsa B, which I can just see there. So, I thought I'd give you a quick tour. I haven't seen one of these for ages, you know, and I haven't owned one for many, many years. Let me show you around it. Well, there she is. Now, I didn't really do much research with this, but the lads tell me it's come from Italy. There are a few clues which I'll uh, tell you about shortly. This was a 2000 edition. So this is one of the last before they replaced it with the Corsa C. And it looks very tidy, you know. There's a dent here, but that's not too bad, is it really? I mean, for a car of this age, it's not bad at all. No sunroof. There's just no rust on anything. Now on the one that I had in Spain, I amassed off all this trim here and then painted it in satin black. But I think what I might do with this is take it for a valet and get them to get the heat gun on it because it brings out all the, uh, all the oils and the plastics. I think that would look much better, to be honest. So I might get that done. Or the other trick is to put sort of baby oil. You get some baby oil in a little brush and just sort of rub it into all these plastics. It brings it all black, back to black. So that's an option. Yeah, I'm impressed with this. So it's a little one litre three cylinder. This was one of the clues actually, as to its origin. That sounds uh, Italian, doesn't it? Not sure where that is in Italy, but I'm sure it does sound Italian. We've got a parcel shelf. It's just really, really tidy. It is actually, as the reg suggests, in very good condition. We've even got the original wheel trims, look at that. We've got two keys as well. And, look at this, 90s technology. There's a button on it which just lights up that little, uh, little light. So you can find the hole in the dark. 
Right, what can I show you then? Oh, this is quite tidy actually. We've got what looks like the, or what appears to be, the original mats. There's just no wear or anything. For 1,295 quid. I might take this to Spain, you know. It's full of what looks like dog hairs, I guess, but with a little mini valet, I think this will all be good. Hmm, right. Now, because it was made for the European market, we've got air conditioning, which is nice. And Steve said it works, which is a right result. I really didn't think it would. That's all good. We're all good there. Oh, I'd forgotten about this. Look at the fuel gauge. Can you see that? So rather than, you know, say like quarter, half, three quarters, that sort of thing, it actually tells you how many liters you've got. It's only done 31,000 miles. There's just hardly any wear or anything. I'm really impressed with this. We've got electric windows. Uh, we've got a hole here for your radio. Glove compartment. And then loads of receipts and stuff. It's MOT till January. Ah, there we go. This is definitely, definitely Italian then. So we've got the, whatever that means, accessory pack, and then the, uh, the manual, the manual. Should we take this for a drive then, see how it performs? Would you like to come with me? Why not? Right, then let's fire up. This is a proper trip down memory lane, this. Slight chi timing chain rattle there. Feels weird, me being on the uh, left-hand side of a car. Let's put that air conditioning on then. And you pull the air conditioning button out. I love this sort of stuff. Reverses. <laughs> hard left. Now, Steve told me this drives particularly well. Uh, right, what side of the road do we need to be on? On the left, that's worrying, isn't it? I didn't even have to think that. Well, straight away, it does feel quite strong, this. Steering's nice and light. Now, the one that I had in Spain, that the very first car that I ever bought and sold, didn't have power steering. I remember wrestling with that. I picked it up from a car park in Los Beliches near, uh, near Fuengirola and took it all the way back to Ben Omadna. And it was disgusting. It was a really filthy example. It had been smoked in for years. There was ash and cigarette butts everywhere. And I just remember wrestling with the steering. And because it had been parked up for some time in Spain and I bought it in, I think it was winter time. It was raining and the car was just covered in dust. And we're driving it back panicking thinking, what I'm going to do with this. I've just made a mistake. Anyway, that was the first car that I ever bought and sold for profit. I paid 200 euros for it, spent another 200 euros on it, and then sold it for 1,500 euros. And that basically put me where I am today. So it's funny how everything comes back around, isn't it? My air conditioning's working. Steve was right, this does drive really well. Might treat it to a new radio if it's going all the way to Spain. Look at that, it's never been smoked in. I actually think the seller of this undersold it a little bit. £1,295 just seems too cheap for a low mileage left-hand drive car like this. Left-hand drive cars in the UK always fetch a premium. I think this could have easily been a two grand car. Steve tells me when he did a car vertical with this, it's been in the UK since 2005. So it was Italian first, and then it's been here ever since. You know what, for the first 30 seconds, I had to remind myself what side of the road I had to be on. But then you soon get used to it, don't you? Aircon isn't ice cold, to be honest. I might get it regassed. What I'm going to do with this then is give it a service, make sure everything's all right with it, give it a fresh MOT, regas the aircon, send it for a valet, and then I might treat it as some new plates. Then I'll take it to Spain, I think, and I might leave it there and come home in the. This is going to be a long trip. Come home in the Fiat Panda that I took over there 18 months ago. Might do that. It would just make much more sense leaving this there with the steering on the correct side as opposed to having the little uh, the little red panda. Yeah, this is a decent little car, this. Steve was telling me as well that it only took 60 quid to fill the tank. 60 pound. I know you'll be watching this video after the video with Mike Brewer, my first episode of my new series. 
so the order's slightly wrong, but after that, I think it'll head for semi-retirement in the sunshine, back where it belongs. Well, I think that's all I can tell you for now, guys. I'm gonna head straight to my mechanics now and leave it there for a service and a check over. And yeah, that's about it. So thank you once again for watching. Thank you for, uh, for putting up with Steve and AJ in my absence. Make sure you follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe, all that sort of stuff. And yeah, see you next time. Cheers, guys. Adios. Or as they say in Italy, ciao. Arrivederci. I don't know. Anyway, see you later.